introduce my new battery extension. Well, these are actually lithium iron phosphate batteries. So they've got the same goop inside as the big ones here. And they claim to have 7200 milliampere hours. But uh, let's have a look at the specs. So these ones are 32700 cells. Okay, these are the product parameters of these cells. 7200 milliampere hours, 3.2 volts. 3.65 volts is the maximum charge voltage. 2.5 volts maximum discharge or minimum discharge voltage, 150 grams. And they're also claiming we can discharge with 35 amps up to 55 amps. So this must be the continuous discharge current and this is the maximum discharge current. Well, I guess we will test that. Amazing, I needed to get these cells. You can buy them on Alibaba for 96 cents per cell, 96 cents. I mean, that's a 7.2 ampere hour cell. Just to put this in perspective, this is the same capacity as this AGM battery here. That is insane, right? Look how small they are. I can easily get the double capacity out of these cells in comparison to AGM. Insane. Okay, now the real reason I bought them is because we want to do some testing with these battery cells here. I bought four of them so we can build a 12 volt battery and can charge and discharge them and do some more testing. And I also have planned some special tests with these ones here. Uh, we do this later on. But the first thing we want to do is we want to test, we want to measure the internal resistance of these cells and the voltage. Calibration. Ah, 8.3 milliohms, 3.268. 8.1 milliohms, 8.3 milliohms, 8.3. Okay, they seem to have around 8 milliohms of internal resistance and yeah, well, I guess, and almost the same voltage. Not sure, I don't think they are matched or something when I ordered them. They just grabbed four of the 1.7 million they have in stock. I just was amazed that we can discharge these cells by 5C continuously. And I really want to test this. Ah, here, Mr. Here, request from Mr. X weeks ago. Andy, it would be interesting if you could do a charge discharge with some different cells. Overlay of the curve would help a great deal when matching a complete battery. It would be nice to see the spread among a batch of cells. I know Mr. X means these large capacity cells here, but I'm not going to do a full charge and discharge with these cells here. This just takes too long, you know. Let's do it with these ones here. These are brand new cells now just shipped to me and we will do a full charge and discharge test with these four cells and then have a look at the curves and overlay them and see what the spread is over these four cells. Oh, we got some free heat shrink. Nice. And because these cells are so small, we can use the uh, smaller tester here, the ZKE Tech, the EBC A20, 5M charging, 20M discharging with full computer control. You know what it can do, right? And connect it. Nice. Oh, thankfully another battery test. I really like these testers, really. They're so much fun to work with. Okay, I'm just going to charge the battery up to 3.65 volts. I'm not sure of what state of charge they are in at 3.26 volts. And I've chosen the 1.42 amps, which is exactly 0.2 C. So 7200 divided by 5. Okay, 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 you got me there. It would be 1440. But this is just the first pre-charge now until we reach 3.65 volts. And then we start the discharge and the charge test again to see how much capacity we get out of each of these cells. Guys, I don't like this. The battery is on 3.45 volts still. I have increased now the charging current from 1.4 amps to 3 amps just to speed things up. But it's still taking energy. 
So, so far I have charged uh, uh, around 800 milliamp per hours, milliamps, milliamp per hours into the battery and it's still charging. So, I think what I should do is here, I should parallel them all and then charge them up and parallel top balance them, so to speak. And then we have a defined um, start point for all the cells to um, discharge them. This could take forever. I mean, it's 10 o'clock already and I really wanted to start this test with the first cell tonight. So I then can start the next one while I'm at work tomorrow and then the next one tomorrow evening and then the next one, it's a three day test anyway. So, okay, let's stop this here and um, parallel them all and see how much current flows from one cell to another because this one is already charged now. These are the amps we are looking for. <laughs> These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Only one person got the reference to Star Wars <laughs> about this comment. <laughs> so funny, really. Okay, I have now paralleled these two cells here and we will measure the current coming from the cell which I just charged up a little bit to the one which is fresh out of the box. <laughs> I love these kind of experiments, really. Don't you too? Leave your comment down below. <laughs> All right, let's connect this baby here and see how much amps we are getting. Holy crap. Okay, we have to we have to pull down our expectations a little bit because these are not high capacity cells here. 7.2 ampere hours, 280 ampere hours, right? So there's lots of more current flowing with these cells than with these ones here. So we should say, oh, 270 milliamps. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. <laughs> okay, there's no problem to parallel them. There will be almost no current. I mean, this is just... <laughs> okay, let's put them all together and charge them up overnight. Hi, hey guys. That's a thumbnail. Look at this perfectly symmetric setup I've arranged here for you. All the positives at the top, is that correct? Yeah, it is. And all the negatives connected at the bottom with our test clamp here, with our probe. Okay, let me just make sure this is all cured and together. Nothing gets warm here. <laughs> just making sure nothing gets warm. Okay, I think we can easily charge with um, 5 amps now to 3.5. Probably 3.5, yeah. Why am I not in the middle of the... And we absorb to a 0 0.1, that's fine. So the battery will be fully charged tomorrow. All four batteries will be fully charged tomorrow morning. And then we can start the first test, which I have already, which I have already programmed. All right, uh, charging. I'm always checking the settings again. It's late at night, you know. And you never know what you click on, see? Ah, oh, just happened. 5 amps, 3.5, 0 0.1, stop, go. All right, so every cell will now get um, 5 divided by 4 is um, 4 in sin, 1.25 amps. Yeah, 1.25 amps, confirmed, which is a bit less than 0 0.2c, but it doesn't matter. It's just the initial fully charged now to, um, yeah, to get started with our test. All right, I wish you all the best dreams for tonight and we shall see us again tomorrow morning. All right, boys and girls, wonderful good morning. So we have now charged our batteries here with 16.9, oh no, 16.0 ones, 16.1 ampere hours. But um, remember, this is for all four. So we have to divide this by four, which is then easy, which is... Um, uh, four ampere hours per cell. So there were roughly, roughly 50, 45, 50 percent charge when they came here. Thanks, camera. Yep, yeah, and good morning to you. You're looking for mice? Yep, there's nothing in here. Okay, I'm just going to pre charge the battery again to 3.65 volts now, and then we start our test. We can already open, open our settings. 
I'll just walk you quickly through here. So we do a constant voltage charge, 2 or 3.6 volts, just to get to a defined point. Then we wait for 30 minutes. Then we discharge with 1.44 amps, which is 0.2 C for these cells, all the way down to 2.5 volts. And then we fully charge again to 3.65. And then we've got a nice discharge and charge curve. And we will do this with all the three other cells as well, and then overlay them and see what the spread is across these cells. Are they any good? Let's find out. All right, let's do the test. Here we go. Okay, so now we are in the wait period. So we will wait 30 minutes now, and then we start the discharge and charging test. All right, this should take around, um, around 10 hours, I guess. Five hours discharging, five hours charging, and then we should have our first result. I'll go to do some work and we will see us this afternoon again. Have a great day. So my friends, welcome back. <laughs> I just came home from work and I had a look at the curve here. It looks like a it looks like a very typical discharge and charge curve for lithium iron phosphate. Look at the charge curve. We even have this little hump here at the beginning before we go really flat, right? That's what we have seen before from the big lithium iron phosphate batteries. And we see this again here with the small ones. I wonder why, huh? All right, let's have a look at the result here. Cycling tests, 5.5 ampere hours, 7,200 it says here, 7,200. And we charged with 5.4 ampere hours only. And I charged to 3.6 volts, 3.65 and discharged to 2.5 and before it was full. What's going on here, guys? Stay calm, stay calm, don't judge. Maybe I've done something wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. Let's just um, save these settings here on this curve and do the second one and see what we get then, right? We don't want to judge too early. Maybe it's just this one cell. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it wasn't fully charged. Maybe it was too cold. Maybe it was too warm. I don't know. Uh, let's do another one and see what result we get then. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Andy, I see you running around in shorts and t-shirt all the time. Isn't it winter in Australia now? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. We've got deepest winter here at the moment. 1.8 degrees this morning feels like minus 1.4. Oh yeah, there's the sun. There it is. Yeah, we will get another sunny, cold day today. Temperatures are expected to be about 22 degrees during the day. That's our winter. That's why I'm wearing the t-shirt. I haven't got a jumper with the logo on it, so I'm wearing a t-shirt. All right. Uh, well, what can I say? Battery number two out of our set of four, and it doesn't look good. Let's have a look here at the cycling test. 5.5 ampere hours discharged and 5.3 charged looks very very much the same as the first one that is not good palo 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 man this is disappointing 7200 milliampere hours and we're getting only 5.5 ampere hours out of it why is this company overrating these cells right they should have put 5000 on it then I would be very happy to get 10% more. But now this is almost 25% less. That is not good. All right, let me save this curve here on the data and, and I'll just keep going and testing these other two remaining cells. And then we will have a final result, hopefully tonight. And I go back inside now to the fireplace. <sighs> Welcome back guys! I'm wearing the inofficial off-grid garage t-shirt. We are done! We have tested all four cells, the Palo, Palo, Lithium Iron Phosphate, 7200 milliampere hours capacity, apparently. Okay, I'll show you quickly the result here on the screen and you will see, look at this! They all measured the same almost, but they are 24% under capacity. Advertised 7.2 ampere hours 
and measured 5.5 only, not even that. Well guys, you can bet I get back to the cellar with these results and um, ask them for advice. But now we want to overlay these four curves we have gained here and see what the spread is across these cells. For me it looks like they are fairly close together, but let's see how this looks like. And there's our cell number one. Cell number two, green. Cell number three, pink. And cell number four, orange. There we go. I think we can turn off the current. Yes, here we go. Look at this. That is amazing. What a good test. Look how close they are together. See, they're all meeting here between 5.4, 5 5.46 to 5.51. So within half an ampere hour, they are all the same. And they're all doing the same increase in voltage here at the beginning of the charge curve and then flatten out. See the green one charges a bit faster than the other ones here, while the blue one is a bit slower. Blue was cell number one and green was cell number two. So 10.7 ampere hours to 10.9 ampere hours only. This is the spread we get until all the cells have reached the um, 3.65 volts. And the discharge curve here also very close together. I guess there's nothing unusual to see here with these cells. I've got some other lithium iron phosphate battery cells coming in. There should be here within the next there should be here within the next one or two weeks and we will do a similar test then because these are larger capacity cells again and I want to see if we get a spread there as well and how much percent that is. But I guess if we would have a faulty cell within this range here, this should reflect in the graph, right? The voltage should drop faster while discharging and the voltage should rise faster while charging. Because you can see the green line here, cell number two, is always on top of all the other ones. And especially here in this area at 3.4 volts, the voltage is a bit higher than with the other cells. But then here while discharging, the green curve lies exactly in the middle of all the other ones. So I don't think we've got anything to see here for cell number two. Ah, man, that is so disappointing that we only get 5.5 ampere hours out of these cells. I was hoping for a good lithium iron phosphate cell because they are so ideal for small projects, you know? For my solar gate, for example, I can use eight of them and have a 24 volt battery, lithium iron phosphate battery, and can charge as fast as I want. While the AGM batteries I have at the moment are restricted from their charging current. Well, I paid only $6 per battery on, on AliExpress, but still it is disappointing that they are riding 7.2 ampere hours on here. Well, I will get back to the manufacturer and see what they come up with. And in the meanwhile, we just um, keep testing with these cells here, um, especially the next one when we discharge this one with 35 amps and see how much capacity we get out of them then and how warm they will get. I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Oh, well, by the way, all the graphs and all the data is, of course, on my website again for these Pal Palo Palo uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if you're interested in these data, uh, knock yourself out and, down and download this all from there. Well, stay charged and safe and we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon when we do more battery testing here and keep working on our battery shelf because so much gear has now arrived. I can really start. I don't know where to start. It is so much. Okay guys, thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.